Welcome to Navigating the Customer Experience. Want to improve your organization's customer service? Looking for insider tips to knock your customer socks off? Then you're in the right place. Here's your host, Yannick Grant. Welcome to Navigating the Customer Experience. On today's episode, our guest is Ronan Walsh. Ronan has been working in digital marketing, specifically SEO, for close to 10 years and is a lecturer in web design and digital marketing in Ireland. He's the owner and founder of Digital Trawler, a SaaS marketing agency based in Ireland. Digital Trawler helps companies with their marketing strategy and messaging and having experts in SEO, paid adverts, social media, and conversion rate optimization. So without further delay, welcome Ronan. Hi, thanks Yannick for, for having me on. And um, I'm looking forward to being able to discuss um, all things kind of digital marketing today and search engine optimization, which are which yourself and your audience. So looking forward to that. Sounds good. Okay, so Ronan, could you share with us a little bit about your journey? How did you get to where you are today? Yeah, so it, it's kind of funny because it's I, I actually think it's kind of similar to your own journey where I started off um, kind of in tourism. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, right? So I did a lot of kind of backpacking and I was a surf and kayak instructor and um, I was I was primarily focused on the kind of tourism and travel industry and that was kind of, I suppose, where my passion was. But I realized that it wasn't a long term plan. Like, you know, there's only um, the like there's nobody on the beach who's a surf instructor who's 40 plus um, and, you know, is, is living a, like, you know, they, they might be wealthy, maybe in, in terms of, you know, spirit and how they're feeling. But there's there's nobody, I suppose, um, with a family of three kids or something like that, or that they they have a house and kind of security and a pension and things like that. So that was kind of eaten away in, in the back of my head when maybe in my young 20s. And I was wor- wondering how exactly I could try and um, try and I suppose kind of uh, progress in my career. So I, while I was backpacking, I met a few people in the industry in the the kind of linen and clothing industry in India, and I started importing clothes into Ireland. And I set up uh, three um, three kind of stalls or kind of shops around the country, and I was running those um, in my early twenties, which was a fantastic experience. And what I wanted to do was try and push those uh, as far as I could. And that's really where digital marketing came into play because I realized that I was getting up at three or four in the morning to drive stock across countries and keep shops up to date. And I was trying to manage staff and make sure that, you know, there was a little bit of profit left for me at the end of the day. And I built a website to try and expand that and to not rely on the brick and mortar kind of model as much. And uh, it came to it came to realize soon after that that it wasn't actually going to really be sustainable. But during my time building the website, I learned how to code. I learned how to do SEO. I learned how to do Google Ads. And there was a local agency that took me in underneath my wing, underneath their wings, and um, showed me a lot of what I could do. And then that's really when I realized I had a real talent for digital marketing, and that. Um, you know, there was a real sense of passion to trying to help other people achieve their dreams, whether it's, you know, getting their their website ranking or helping them with a Google ad strategy. Um, and then there's also helping the customer at the end of the journey. So, for example, you know, if somebody's looking for, um, I think, God, one of my first clients was a, a bridal boutique. And, uh, you know, if you're able to match the person to the right dress, the customer at the end also wins. So not only does the business win, but the customer is getting exactly what they want. So there was loads of reasons for me to kind of get into digital marketing. And eventually that company that took me underneath their wing was bought out and they started passing leads on to me and I kind of fell into a freelance role. And from there, then it's just grown into what digital trawler is today. You know, there's five uh, other people working in there, working on web design, Google ads, search engine optimization, social media, we have a project manager, and then there's myself as well. So it's a nice little business that um, that is kind of running. And, you know, our aim is to really kind of help others uh, fulfill their dreams with, uh, with business development. All right. Sounds good. Now, yeah. you are big into digital marketing and search engine optimization, affectionately known as SEO. Can you share with us, Ronan, how you think SEO has changed over the past 10 years? And as a business, especially in light of COVID and the pandemic globally, 
what do companies need to do to get to the top of their industry or their area um, where their SEO is concerned? Yeah, so uh, that's that's a really good question because it's changed a lot over the past 10 years. So originally, when I would have started off my digital marketing journey and doing SEO for other companies, it would have been a lot of what's known as on-page optimization, which is, you know, for anybody who has a WordPress website, um, that's kind of Yoast, you know, filling in titles, descriptions, uh, keyword placement on your in your paragraphs and in your text on your blogs and on your pages and making sure that all of that is correct but that's only a very small part of it um today whether it's completely blown into what i would describe as as marketing like seo is kind of a term i use now to describe marketing in general because you have to have a content plan which means your branding has to be on point you have to really understand your your customers um, issues that they're having in order to find the content that you need to write about you need to have a PR strategy that um, gets you exposure out there and links back to your website. Your website needs to be in tip top order. You know, there can't be any security or technical issues with it. And then, like I was saying there, you know, th there is obviously the element of on page where you need your titles and descriptions and things um, working for you as well. It needs to be visually appearing, appealing. And of course, um, there's a little bit of social media involved in it as well that kind of falls underneath the PR element as well, that you're kind of getting your your own brand out there a bit more and you're developing your your business in the traditional sense. But Google picks up on that a lot more these days than they would have back in the day. Um, and that is that's really what kind of SEO is today in my eyes. It's that all encompassing view as to how can we really drive our business online? Where are our audience? What forms are they on? Can I get my business there? And can I get a link back to my website? Can I get my local press or my national press or you know my industry press to write an article about me and, and push my brand out there that little bit more again so that people know me? And Google's constantly picking up on all of these and they're, they're looking for how frequently you're doing it. They're looking for um, what sort of authority the other websites have and they're tying this all together and they're, they're giving your website a score. And then that score is how you're competing for that number one position on Google. Mm. And is the competition, the competition on Google is global? As in when you're ranked on Google, is it being ranked, is your company being ranked across the globe or is your company being ranked as the best in your country? That's that's a really good question. So um, search engine optimization is um, so there's a tool called search uh, search console, right? And in search console, you can choose whether you're global or whether you're country specific. So um, when you are global, you're competing across the world, right? So you're you're telling Google you're more open to having people come to your site from anywhere in the world, right? Mm -hmm. But you're competing across the world. So it becomes a little bit more difficult. Um, and there's a number of elements that you have to bear in mind. So such as like where your website's hosted. So for example, um, I know I, I'm in Ireland at the minute, um, but I have a niece in Australia. And we were searching for a birthday present for her and we were on all these toy shops and the toy shop image on the product page loaded so slow that we had to leave the site. I think we were waiting maybe 10 minutes. Wow. And yeah, so like, but that's that's an issue that um, it's, it's kind of slowly being eradicated, but it's an issue to do with um, that in Australia, that website probably loads perfectly. In Ireland, it's to come the whole way across the other side of the world so it can actually take quite a while for that image to be processed. And um, so you would you would kind of combat that by using something called uh, CDN to go too complicated on it, but basically it's a content delivery network. So basically your website isn't just hosted in Australia, it's hosted on multiple servers throughout the world. And mm. um, so like it's things like that become more complicated as you expand your targeting area, whether if you say, look, Google, I'm, I just want to target Ireland, Google will give you a preference. And um, so you'll kind of be given a higher priority to rank there. And of course, then there is um, there is your country specific domain names as well. Like in Ireland, we have .ie, in the UK, they have .co.uk. And if you buy a domain name with that, or you're using that domain name, well, then you're specifically um, tied to that country. 
So there are there are a number of factors to take into consideration. And then on top of that, then you have languages. So languages are even another more complicated element where you have to have specific bits of code on each page to tell Google, you know, what language um, and what browser should be uh, prioritized for this particular page. And if there's alternative versions of it, and wh what are those alternative versions and do they all link correctly together? Mm -hmm. So th there's quite a few quite a few moving parts. <laughs> Yeah, so to answer your question, it's it's entirely up to the person who is developing the site or who's running the business. Um, me personally, I, I target across the world um, and that's that's what I'm I'm focused on. And, you know, I suppose that's why I'm, I'm here in a podcast with you and trying to push the digital trawler brand and trying to push the Ronan Walsh brand a little bit more to across the sea um, and trying to you know attract people and get people interested in my brand and then this like even what i'm doing now is considered seo you know like if you were to leave a link or even you know on like on the page where there's um where you're you're writing the podcast you know that's giving google a sign that okay ronan's out there he's doing podcasts and he's talking about digital trawler so and I can see that that's come from Yannick's website, which is very authoritative in the podcast area. So we'll start ranking maybe Ronan for more podcast keywords. And then gotcha. that's kind of the way Google works. So it's really about getting out there, getting your name out there as much as you can and being as creative as, as possible. Because like when I first came to SEO, it it was a little bit boring in the sense that, you know, you'd go in, you would optimize a keyword, your page would rank a little bit more. And you'd be focused on rankings, whether now it's about creativity that you're you're going out and you're wondering, how can I get more links back to my site? How can I get people to pick up on this content so I'm beating the competition that I'm getting a higher score than them? And that is um that that's I suppose really helping us um kind of develop really good uh campaigns and things like that because it's just it's creativity really, it's getting back to marketing basics, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. Amazing. So a lot of our listeners are small to medium sized business owners, right? And they've listened to um, a lot of what you've said about, you know, how SEO has changed over the last few years. And especially as you went into the details a while ago of positioning yourself either country specific or global um, in terms of being seen across um, different platforms. But let's say, for example, they don't have the they don't have the experience in house in their businesses to do this on their own and they're going to hire a digital marketing consultant. What are some of the things they need to look for when they're hiring somebody? Because, you know, you have a lot of people out there who market themselves in this capacity, but do, do they have that requisite knowledge and experience and exposure? Like what you've just explained here to us to ensure that you're picking the right person. Yeah. So it, it's a minefield out there. You, you are a hundred percent right. There are <laughs> hundreds of consultants and the biggest thing for me, and I think this doesn't just go for SEO or digital marketing, but it's communication. Mm -hmm. So because we, we see it the whole time we're working with web developers, we're working with other digital marketing agencies and PR agencies and things like that. And, and you can see projects kind of snowball. And next thing, the client saying, well, you didn't deliver this. And the client saying, yeah, but I asked for this. And it's um, it becomes a back and forth. And it, they like those um, engagements can get really sour, you know? Right. Yeah. So for me, it comes down to making sure that the owner understands what they're signing up for. So expectations from the outright and you're agreeing on this is the end goal. This is how many users I want signed up. This is how many email addresses I have to or leads I have to generate from this. So this is how much revenue or return on advertising spend that I need to get back. So they are very clear goals for an agency to go, OK, I can do that for you. Um, and it becomes very clear then as well that, you know, if you that set out at the start, it, it becomes a lot easier to have a conversation if your agency isn't hitting their targets. If you have that defined at the start, you can go back to them and say, look, this is what we set out to achieve. We're not doing it. We need to wrap this up or you need to change what you're doing. So that that is kind of one area to, to look at. The other thing that I see is um, a lot of SMEs, maybe if there's um, five or six employees, they might look at maybe taking on marketing staff. And I, I often find that those marketing staff aren't able to deliver on what the owner wants. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And they're they're quite good at, at agreeing to saying, yes, I'll be able to deliver that at the start. And, and they don't really know what what they are able to deliver. And you can't expect one piece of person to be able to do SEO, Google ads, social media, like update your website and expect them to be able to do all of that and do it to the level that, you know, Coca-Cola or Nike or any of those sites are doing. And I think that that's kind of the expectation that a lot of SMEs have. So you need to support that person in their role or else maybe perhaps get an agency in to define what their role is going to be and maybe give them some freelancers to to support them in that role as well. So you might have an agency come in, design the strategy, set up the processes, uh, train your, your marketing admin person in what they should be doing and looking out for, and then have some freelancers behind that person to support them in the SEO role or the Google ads or social media or something like that. Like, you know it yourself, like you're, you're running a podcast, like editing this takes time. Uh, then there's the promotion on social media. And, you know, like just straight away there, you're on to podcast editing, you're on social media, um, scheduling and, and uh, admin in terms of replying and things like that. And you got graphic designs, like there's three different skills there that are needed in order to produce a podcast. And then you, you stick it up onto your website as well. So now you need kind of the technical knowledge there. So like, really, you should have like four people there that you're able to go, okay, right, podcast is done. It gets sent to John, who's going to edit it. There's another person there who is um, who's going to schedule all the social media posts. There's Emma who's going to put together the the images using Canva, and then there's Joseph who's going to upload it to to WordPress. And you need that team behind you in order to actually really really deliver. And there's a, there's a whole work um, there's a whole like load of freelancers out there who are looking for that work, and they're quite happy to take on. Um, that work as long as it's kind of consistent. I think that's kind of the, the trick to keeping those freelancers happy. Um, you know, like they want they want freedom that they're able to maybe spend time with their kids or collect them and drop them to school. And, uh, you know, mm-hmm. they still want the life outside of it, but uh, they're quite happy to kind of go on maybe an hourly contract per month or something like that, mm-hmm. that will allow you to, you know, produce uh, produce quality content that will get your name out there. Um, and you know you can come to an agreement fair enough their price per hour might be um a little bit more than what it would cost an employee but it's going to take them half the time and it's going to be twice as good agreed all right so those are some considerations as business owners or managers in businesses as to what you need to look out for when you're hiring somebody to help you to develop that side of your business so thanks for sharing, Ronan. Now, Ronan, could you share with us what's the one online resource, tool, website, or app that you absolutely cannot live without in your business? Oh God, there's there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're we're entirely remote, and um, we rely on a lot of apps uh, for communication, particularly. Um, I I there's there's many there that might be irrelevant, like Gmail is priceless to us and um, just being able to communicate by email and uh, slack is another one but i think one in particular actually is teamwork um so it's actually an irish-based company mm-hmm. teamwork.com and it's project management software and once a week we go through all of that uh, it we upload all of the tasks we make sure that uh we myself and the project manager sit down and we go this needs to be done for such and such a client and so on and we make a big list out and then we we upload that to teamwork and everybody by the friday evening will know all of their jobs that they have to do the following week so that they're able to plan and every monday morning then we have a team meeting with uh with, with everybody we run through all of the tasks and and then we communicate over slack then during the week to make sure everything's running okay um but that's like without teamwork we would be we'd be lost because we're able to share files for certain clients and where, um, yeah, it's, it's really been, it's been a great lifesaver. So if there's any agencies, whether they're, they're digital or whether they're accountants or whatever it is, I'd recommend looking into that. Um, so it's kind of, it's kind of similar to like Asana or Trello mm. or something like that. Right. But, um, teamwork just kind of seems to have a little bit more functionality than all of those, a little bit of a learning curve at the start, but definitely worth it. <laughs> 
Awesome. Yeah. All right, Ronan, could you share with us maybe one or two books that have had the biggest impact on you? It could be a book that you read recently or a book that you read many years ago, but it still has a great impact on you. Yeah, so there are um, there are two books that I read recently. One is um, Clockwork uh, by Mike Malowski, I think is how you pronounce his second name. Mm-hmm. And then there's uh, Profit First by him as well. Um, in fact, actually, I read Clockwork and I liked the book so much that I went out and bought all of his books that he'd ever written. So wow. I have a, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's pretty good. So I have um, I have another book by him, The Pumpkin Plan and Fix This Next that are um, that are next to read on my list. But uh, yeah, so Clockwork is basically talking about how your business should be able to kind of run basically by itself. So it's kind of similar to like the four hour work week, which mm-hmm. I'm sure you're familiar with. But, right. Yes. Um, yeah. It's, it's maybe a little bit more practical than that. So it's talking about uh, being able to give yourself like a month off. Um, and the idea isn't that, you know, you need a month and you deserve a month and all of that. It's more that if your business can last a month without you, like within a month, you're going to have your invoicing, you're going to have new sales come on and you're going to basically like, every cycle runs at least once in a month mm-hmm. um and uh yeah basically it, it tells it show it kind of takes you out of your comfort zone to let go of loads of tasks as owners of businesses mm-hmm. so like particularly smes we're we're terrible for jumping in and trying to fix issues that our employees um maybe there was a communication issue or maybe they didn't do it exactly how you like it like if you can leave those things go um you know, you need to be able to move on and and look for new clients and um, set up processes and then move on again and focus on growing the business. That's what Clockwork is about. And then Profit First is all about kind of cash flow management. So um, there's a law which is Parkinson's law that if there's kind of a void to fill, you you will fill it. So basically, if you're given a task and you have to do it within a week, you'll get it done within that week. Mm-hmm. But if you're given a month, it'll take you the month as well. Um, and it's the same with uh, profit first, which is when your bank account is full of money, you're very likely to spend it on kind of new ways without a huge amount of strategy going behind it. Whether he he talks about setting up these kind of different bank accounts and that you're you're basically using kind of like an envelope system through your bank accounts to run your, your business. So you have a certain amount for expenses, you have a certain amount for profit, certain amount for tax, certain amount for paying yourself and um yeah it's uh we we've only just set that up and uh yeah it's um it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting to see how well it works but it's gonna force me to maybe cut some expenses that uh you know i I probably don't really need Mm -hmm. all right sounds good so we will have the links um in the show notes of this episode for those books that ronan mentioned as well as the author for those of you that would like to tap into that whether through a physical book or i'm sure he's available on audible as well right um yes yeah Mm -hmm. all right ronan could you share with us what's the one thing that's going on in your life right now that you're really excited about either something that you're working on to develop yourself or your people um so something we're 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 doing ourselves actually at digital trawler that i'm quite excited about is we're going to start bringing out new courses pretty soon mm. um and they're going to be free so like you we want to help business owners um so we're going to have uh and, and now i might be a bit over enthusiastic with this <laughs> but we we're i think by the end of february we should have a google analytics course out we noticed that a lot of like marketing managers really struggle with analytics and trying to get like extract data and understand what's going on in it so we're going to have a course in that coming out it's going to be free um and similarly with seo google ads there's going to be free courses there for that as well so get onto our mailing list and you know as soon as they're available um, you'll be getting the first invite to it. Right. Nice. Okay. So that dovetails very nicely into my next question. So they listen to this podcast. They're really intrigued about, you know, what your company is doing, digital trawler, um, especially the whole concept of how SEO has changed. And of course, how to hire that right person to assist you in building and developing and getting that presence that you need across the globe, depending on the platform that you operate on. And then you drop this great nugget to say you guys are going to be really releasing free courses in relation to helping people understand the data better. Where can they find you online? 
Yeah, so you can find us at digitaltrawler.com mm -hmm. um, and you'll be able to find all the resources in there as well. Um, so we have a free free Google, uh, our free audit as well, just from an SEO perspective. So we'll give you feedback on your site um, at, at no charge or anything like that. Um, and we have some plugins there as well that help you um, identify where your users are coming from. So yeah, so that's digitaltrawler.com and you'll be able to sign up for those courses there as well. Or you can catch me on LinkedIn as well. So if you search for Ronan Digital Trawler, you should find me. All right. So they can jump onto your website and that's where they can sign up to be a subscriber. Yeah. So when the courses come out, they'll be notified. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. That's it. Okay. Before we wrap our interviews up, Ronan, we always like to ask our guests, do you have a quote or a saying that during times of adversity or challenge, you'll tend to revert to this quote. It kind of helps to keep you focused and get you back on track. If for any reason you get derailed or you're demotivated, do you have one of those? Um, yeah. So the, there's one that I find myself going back to year after year, which is actions make money. Um, <laughs> and basically the more actions you take, the closer you are to, to getting to what you want to do. Um, and it's just really simple and it's re really easy to action, you know, nice, so nice. just break down your tasks and just, you know, get out there and get them done. And uh, yeah, that would be for any entrepreneur. That's that's kind of it. Of course, having a clear plan behind it really helps you identify which actions to take. But, um, you know, if, you t if you're taking the wrong action, you're better off learning about it sooner. So the sooner you take that action, the sooner you learn that that was the wrong one True. and the sooner you're going to find the right one. True. Agreed. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. So actions make money, correct? Yeah. All yeah, right. That's it. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, Ronan, thank you so much for joining us today on this podcast and sharing some of these awesome nuggets with our audience. You know, I'm sure they're going to definitely reach out to you and connect with you from they've listened to this episode. And I know you'll definitely have some new subscribers for the free courses that you are launching in short order. So we really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule and hopping on here with us today. Thanks, Jenny. Appreciate it. So guys, just want to remind you, you can follow us on Facebook in our private Facebook group. It's called Navigating the Customer Experience Community. And feel free to follow us on Twitter at Navigating CX. Until next time, I'm your host, Yanni Grant. Thank you for listening to Navigating the Customer Experience. If you'd like to connect with us even more, please feel free to hop onto Facebook and join our private Facebook group, navigating the customer experience community and of course feel free to follow us on twitter at navigating cx we also have a new book available on amazon the abcs of a fantastic customer experience it's available in ebook and paperback so if you want to increase revenue in your organization build a stronger service culture and create employees or develop employees who are really mastering service delivery in your business, you need to grab a copy of this book. Until next time, I'm your host, Yanni Grant. Thanks for listening. For more awesome resources to take your customer service game to another level, head over to navigatingthecustomerexperience.com. See you next time.